Hi, this is Nisha. This is going to be kind of my first uh, kind of music discussion video. Because of YouTube's policies, I can't play sound clips or anything, or at least I'd be afraid to. You know how they are these days. So, what I thought I'd do, at least for this one, is kind of go through a music directory on my computer. Most all, well, all of my stuff I have on physical media. I never was a, a downloader. Uh, just a little before my time, you know, records and CDs. One of the bands that anyone who's known me for a long time that I was definitely obsessed with for a period of time is or was the Smashing Pumpkins. Now, one thing I always kind of did, I don't really care about the drama or the backstage antics or any of that stuff of bands. In fact, I kind of actively avoided it for a long time because you could do that in the 80s and 90s and even early 2000s without getting to it. I didn't care. If I liked music, I liked it. And if I didn't, I didn't. And so I just enjoyed the Smashing Pumpkins. And it's just, it's, 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 it's the era I grew up in. I was a teenager and became a, an adult in the 90s. And it just seemed like their music was kind of everywhere throughout that decade and so a lot of momentous events in my life parties friends things it just it, it kind of was a soundtrack for me so let's kind of go through I actually have my music directory kind of divided into genres like classic rock alternative rock um, and yeah, techno industrial Yet, in the main directory, there's something called Smashing Pumpkins. That's how much of their stuff I have. So in there, let's click on Major Albums, what I've got marked. So going just alphabetically, we have Adore. And all of the Adore remastered, Redore issue copies. And I thought that was cool when they did that. It was a big set, and there's a lot of unique tracks, even for someone like me who kind of picked up rare, interesting tracks. I like hearing demos. I absolutely love acoustic stuff. And it was interesting to hear this electronic take. I actually really liked Adore. Um, it came out at the right time, around 98. I was getting into kind of European electronic music myself, and it was interesting that after huge success with their previous album, they went to something experimental. A lot of bands would have just doubled down on what worked before. Next up, alphabetically, we have Gish, and then of course the uh, the remastered, and then the kind of the B sides, the tripping through the stars part of the reissue. You know, Gish is not my favorite. It's it's honestly probably my least favorite. Funnily enough, I kind of like some of the earlier demo tapes more than Gish. Gish was a little too monotone for me. It had good parts and it had a good song or two, but it wasn't quite my speed. But, you know, it's worth having. It had enough good songs. And it's not as if the Pumpkins had a ton of albums to really indulge in anyway. Next up, again going alphabetically, we have Judaso, which was their B-Sides compilation from their Best Of album. And uh, Hobo the Cat just jumped up. Hi, Hobo. I was trying to find you earlier to do a video on you. <laughs> but yeah, this was an interesting uh, B-Sides collection. It had some good stuff on it, but a lot of stuff I'd already had from previous albums. But at least they give some content with the best of for us collectors. Next, we have Machine of the Machines of God. That was their last kind of official album released in 2000 before the breakup I liked it uh, some people didn't I thought it was good not their best but I really enjoyed it it had some really good kind of uh, singles on it a lot of stuff I really uh, really enjoyed I really liked eye of the morning some other uh, other things there it wasn't really so great with the everlasting gaze I didn't hate it but I don't tend to be a very loud person so I was more of a try 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 fan but that was a good song next we have Machina 2 the friends and enemies of modern music that was their digital download only that they put out 2000 2001 
I did get a physical copy, but that was a very interesting time in what they did. They wanted to release this. Actually, they wanted Machina itself to be a double album. Then they wanted to release Machina 2, the label resisted, yada yada. So they put it out, and that was showing that the Pumpkins were kind of an early adopter of uh, internet distributing and, uh, you know, free content. And in a lot of ways, Machina 2 may be better, at least more raw, more authentic than Machina 1. Of course, it has a lot of duplicate tracks and everything, but it does have a lot of tracks in general, so I really enjoyed that one. And now we get into all the melancholy songs and uh, albums. I've got the originals, and then I've got <laughs> all the reissues and bonus material. Good grief! That'll that needs to be its own video. Uh, that, I mean, that's their that's their monumental album. You know, but Pink Floyd had the wall. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins has Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Uh, it came out in '95. It was still very much on rotation through '98, '99, and a lot of the songs have become classics today, like 1979 and and whatnot. Funnily enough, you know, Bullet with Butterfly Wings kind of like Everlasting Gage, was not my favorite at all. Uh, so many better songs on that album, but yeah. Tonight Tonight is probably one of my favorites of all time, especially the acoustic version. And there's a lot of neat content on the reissue as well. Now uh, the next couple are the newer pumpkins after they uh, put back together, i.e. Billy Corgan reused the name. Um, I'll mention my dis feelings on that later. But we have Monuments to an Elegy, which frankly I haven't listened to enough. I've had it for you know years and I've listened to it maybe half a dozen times, so it is just there. Next, we have Oceania, which I've listened to more. It has some good songs, but it also has some repetitive songs. Kind of suffers from that modernity phase. But I would say I tend to like it better than Monuments. Next, we have Pisces Iscariot, which is their B-Sides album that came out in 94, a collection of B-Sides. Just awesome material, kind of raw, um... Well, it, it feels like B-Sides, but I love B-Sides. So it, it, it was great filler while they were working on Melancholy, but unlike a lot of filler, it even had some singles. Obviously, Landslide is, is very well known and a great cover song. And of course, we have the remastered and it's bonus disc. It's kind of funny. There's a B-Sides bonus disc of a B-Sides album, but that's how much material that the Pumpkins had, especially early on. They, were, they had so many songs that didn't make it into their albums that ended up as B-Sides, and even many more songs than that that didn't go anywhere. And most were written by Corgan, but um, a number were written by James Eha as well. And uh, I tend to like those. They're, they're more folksy. Kind of an interesting counterbalance. Next we have Siamese Dream, and then of course the remastered and the uh, lollipop fun time uh, bonus disc for the remastered. I mean, Siamese Dream was just awesome. In some ways I like it better than, than Melancholy. Uh, today, a amazing song. Uh, Disarm is, you know, maybe a little overplayed, but good grief. It, uh, I love guitars in that sense, and, and kind of the, the violin, the strings backing. Just... It's really probably the one that got me into the pumpkins. And now we're getting into the Airplane Flies High, which was a collection of five EPs, extended plays, which were essentially the singles from the uh, Melancholy songs, but some of them were expanded and, and, and given more depth, and it released as a box set. Pretty cool. And then, of course, they reissued that as well. Giving a live album, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, this is basically just melancholy songs. Some of them are more raw cuts. You do have some, uh, some acoustic as well. And then finally, we have Zeitgeist, which was their kind of reforming album. And I really actually like Zeitgeist. I mean, part of it was, hey, we haven't had pumpkins in a long time, so... Why not? But, yeah, 
yeah I, I really liked zeitgeist it, it had enough of that pumpkins feel i think a lot of it was the fact that jimmy chamberlain was still was still a member he had that drum I mean, he was always key to to my mind i think that's what the later albums like oceania and monuments were uh, were missing frankly was that that jimmy chamberlain drum i mean i wish eha was there too because to me he was really just as much a part of the band i, I liked his kind of quiet understated tone but he had such a dry sense of humor it was great if you listen to them live uh, yeah he had some funny things and i don't know maybe it's just we have some more personality so i liked him but anyway i did like zeitgeist and it had some really great b-sides too and interestingly they had a few different versions with bonus material depending on if you picked it up say at target or amazon or best buy you get an extra song so that was the uh, major albums I've got another folder below it called the EPs, the Extended Plays. First up we have 1979 Mixes, which is a remix album of, you guessed it, 1979 songs, basically dance songs. I mostly bought this as a completist. Next we have American Gothic, which was an EP that came out after Zeitgeist, I believe it was 2000, yeah, 2008, because it came out when I was in Russia. I really like these songs. It's only four songs, but I really liked them. Uh, next we have I, which was a song they did and it was released as a single. They did it for the uh, Lost Highway soundtrack. Guys, if you've never done Acid, and I don't recommend that you do, but if you've never done Acid, just watch Lost Highway in a dark room at night and it's basically a great simulation of an acid trip and i fits right in there with that it came out between melancholy and a door and really kind of showed where the electronic way the pumpkins were going great foreshadowing there next we have lul which was essentially rhinoceros's single but expanded to be an ep it came out after gish Again, I mostly have it to be a completist, although it does have a couple of interesting songs tacked on at the end that you can't really find much of anywhere else, so yeah, why not? I found it in a, a store years ago. Now I have the Machina 2 EPs, there were three of them, but most people just kind of lump them in with the main Machina album. Now we have Moon which was an early demo tape, 1988-89 period, before Gish came out. I actually remember finding this in college and just freaking out to have early Smashing Pumpkins and stuff, and uh, it's interesting. It really is. In some ways, I do like it more than Gish. We also have Nothing Ever Changes. And the so-called Smashing Pumpkins, these are, again, early kind of um, demo tapes with some very interesting early material especially uh, nothing ever changes that's uh, something to listen to if you haven't next we have still becoming a part which i received as a bonus disc when i kind of pre-ordered machina the machines of god it has five tracks on it including i but it has some really good interesting tracks like it has a acoustic version of mayonnaise and it has an instrumental track called hope that's just terribly haunting i almost listened to this cd more than i did the album itself it was a great you know, little you know 20 25 minute play just to have something quick i remember listening to it after classes quite a bit when it came out just a you know, little kind of afternoon break now we have the Tear Garden EPs. This was yet another huge project, monumental project that Corgan tried to do and started to do, but then it never went anywhere. They had two that were released complete on physical media. Then they had an incomplete third that two of the songs were released online. Now we have the end is the beginning is the end is the beginning is the end is the beginning mixes, which again is another remix album of that song from Batman and Robin. Moving on. And that's our EPs. Next I have a folder called The Marked, which is 
uh, compilation of songs from Billy Corgan's original band from the 80s when he lived in Florida. I'm not going to delve into that. Uh, it's not very good, either sound or quality, but it's interesting just to have. I found uh, cassettes of these on uh, early eBay a long time ago. Next, I have a thing called this, a, a section called the singles. It has pretty much all the singles. There's a few rare songs, b-sides, but since all the re-releases, that's pretty much duplicated. I have another folder called tribute albums. And I've got one called uh, <laughs> Spin MySpace Tribute to the Smashing Pumpkins. Another one called Midnight in the Patch Tribute. And then one called A Gothic Tribute. Uh, I think I picked up at least two out of those three in Russia. Next I put Zwan, which was kind of Corgan's interim band. And uh, it, he released Mary Star of the Sea in 2003. In Between Pumpkins. That was the only full album. I also have the Honestly single here. And then I have The Glass House, which is a, kind of a live radio recording. Zwan was like bizarrely happy Smashing Pumpkins. It did have Jimmy Chamber Jimby, there we go. Jimmy Chamberlain. Uh, so it had that right sound and feel. Next I have a folder, I'm going back up to the top, called Billy Corgan. The first one is 99X Radio, a live show he did. Next is the Ransom soundtrack, which is instrumentals he did. And then I have the Stigmata score soundtrack, which he did. And then I have the Future Embrace, which was his sole single album he put out under his name in 2005. It is very electronic-y. Um, it's got a couple of good songs, a couple of interesting cameos, uh, but it's it's there. And then I've got Star Children, which was basically a, a Joy Division cover band that Corgan played with in the 90s. Um, I also like Joy Division, but that's a topic for another video. Next up, I have a folder called Demos and Outtakes. And these are pretty much all going to be bootlegs. Uh, I'd, again, I did find physical media, but pretty much bootlegs. Some of these are actually downloaded right off the Corrigan or Pumpkins website, though. First folder is called 1988 Demos. You can guess what that is. It's a lot of the same repeats from the cassettes, although these are cleaner versions because they're off the master tapes. And then I have 1989 demos, same thing. These are at the real studios. Then I have Adore Demos 1 and Adore Demos 2, which were bootlegs. Then I have one called Billy's Home Demos, which if memory serves without clicking on the folder, was mostly uh, melancholy demos amongst other things. Let's see. Yeah. Next we have Gravity Demos, which was instrumental versions of Melancholy songs, kind of early versions. A lot of these were actually used in a pastiche on Aeroplane Flies High. Next up we have If All Goes Wrong Demos, which was an interesting... The, uh, that they did interesting kind of a live rehearsal demo DVD they did during before during the 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 um, zeitgeist era and i have the dvd but i ripped the songs off and put them in my playlist here next i have the machina acoustic demos which i really enjoyed i i enjoyed having acoustic versions of the machina songs especially next we have mashed potatoes which was a free download off their website it was a homemade box set they did of just random bits and bobs from the mid-90s that the pumpkins, mostly Corgan, gave out as gifts. Next, I have a folder just called Pumpkins Odds and Ends that I made myself. It's just random bits and songs and things from other things and internet songs that were never on things. So there's all kinds of just weird little songs in there that I might talk about specifically in a different video. 
Next we have the original Friends and Enemies of Modern Music tape, which is literally a tape that was done with a lot of Machina demos, but some other odds and ends on there too and unique songs. I like it as well. Um, it's interesting. Now I have a folder for James Yeha. You got his album, uh, Let It Come Down. Also, Look to the Sky. That's what I've got here for him, his two albums. I really like it. It's more of a country vibe, very mellow. Next, I even have a folder for Jimby. Jimby. There we go again. I'm just going to call him Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy Chamberlain, called the Jimmy Chamberlain Complex, which is him drumming with some guest stars and things. But yeah, it's really good, just kind of jazzy music. Now I have an album called Live Pumpkins. And I've got a lot of live on here. I tried to have at least one from each of the eras. The first several, because of the alphabetization, are downloads from their website. They made several live shows available. And these guys would play some long-ass live shows, too. Two, three hours. Let's skip through all those, because they're just dates. The first named one, Bootleg, is called Acoustic Nights. You can guess what that is. It was uh, kind of a preview of songs done in 99 that would appear on Machina later. It's two nights on one CD. Now we have another 17 seconds, which was an Adore show. We have Automatic, which was a show from the Machina Tour, two disc. Now we have an album called Beautiful People, which has a couple of guest cameos by Marilyn Manson. Not my favorite guy, but I don't hate him. I, I think we all kind of went through that phase in the 90s when he was kind of interesting, I suppose. Another album I have is called Early Machina Tour. You can guess what that is. And then it's second disc. And I do have the original Earphoria, the, the original demo live CD. It was later re-released as an actual album, but for a long time you could not find Earphoria, and I, I found one of the demo copies that was sent out to like radio stations and stuff. Interesting stuff there. Next I have an album called Exit Melancholy, which was one of their final Melancholy shows. It has some of the late songs from like Aeroplane. I think it even has I played live on it. I have an early recording here called Fishing Blue, which would be in that early kind of pre and right in the Gish era there. I have another one called Kickstart, which is a melancholy uh, era recording. And next up, I do have the live at Cabaret Metro, which was their 10588 show often credited as the pumpkins very first show i do have the original disc the only thing i don't have is the original little cardboard slip it things happened but i do have the original disc um it is interesting not good but interesting and definitely something any collector should have because only a few of these were given out at the uh, final show now I have a live at the Metro from the uh, Gish DVD. And then I have another live at the Metro from the Siamese Dream. And then I have Machina Live 2000. And then another one. I have a interesting demo CD out of Canada called Much Music, which was done during the Adore period. It's literally two... Um, two CDs that a record station would have used. It even has uh, some adverts from that time period as tracks on there. <laughs> and it's original, it's not a burned. It's, it's interesting. And now I've got a, a show from 1991 from New York. It's just called New York. But so it would be Gishera songs. Looks like it's from December. Now I have the Oceania Live, again in New York. It's two CDs, and this was an official release. And now I have uh, Pulse Basement Jam, which was a live show, and it was released with the uh, Pisces Iscariot reissue. 
some interesting kind of live takes. Now I have a bootleg called Second to Last Gig, which which would have been 11 of 29 of 2000, so late November of 2000. It's the last major show they did. And I have a bootleg called Secret Destroyers from 1996, so obviously you're going to get later melancholy songs. And I have another one called Secret Gig, which was from Australia, if memory serves, from 98. It has a lot of the Adore songs live, which are interesting because they rearrange them. They sound very different live than they do on the album. Some better, some worse. But for a collector, it's, it's interesting to have the live versions. Next, I have what's called the Berlin Bullet, which is from 96, yet another uh, melancholy. When you're picking up bootlegs, it, 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 there's so many melancholy shows, so I try to cherry pick the better ones. Now, here's one called The Greatest Day, which is a bootleg of live stuff from 93. Now, this one's interesting. This is one of the first bootlegs I ever heard about, actually, back in high school. Uh, a guy I knew happened to have it or know about it and so I found a copy it was kind of interesting because he's like oh yeah there's a there's a pumpkins live and it's real CD it's not a you know a whatever because we didn't really have burning at that time you know it wasn't a mixtape and he had this thing and then it's like what the hell I, it wasn't in any of the discographies and that's kind of one of my early introductions to like actual mass-produced bootlegs it's actually a pretty good show too with uh, a lot of acoustic which as I've said I really enjoy now we have one called the Viper Room from January of 98. So pre-Adore. Very interesting show, very small, low-key show. But Corgan previews a lot of songs that would later appear on Adore as a po a in addition to some Machina and other random... I sound Machina, excuse me, Melancholy and other random songs. Sorry, a cat jumped on me, guys, so it distracted me. <laughs> When I was looking for them earlier, they were hiding because I wanted to record them. Now, when I'm not paying attention. <laughs> and now, we have one called Under the Covers, which is a compilation bootleg of cover songs, which the Pumpkins did a ton of in their day, all the way from 1989 through 2000. So, some good covers, some bad covers, some interesting covers, some good recordings, some it's all over the place, but kind of neat. Now we have uh, VH1 Storytellers, which they really should release as an official uh, album. It's got some really good renditions of songs. This is the raw recording, so it's got retakes and redubs and things, but it's really neat and the sound quality is very good because it was official. And of course an edited version appeared on VH1, so this is one to look for if you like live stuff. And now we're back around to the major albums directory. So, without really going into the singles, let's just see. I've got a single of Ava or Ava Adore. I've got Cherub Rock single. Both Disarm 1 and Disarm 2 singles. I've got the I Am 1, which was not even a release single. It was a demo. I actually found that one in Portland. I've got the Peel Sessions, which was a three track release. I've got the perfect number one and number two single. I've got the Pisces Iscariot single which was actually a seven inch vinyl record they released with a couple of songs on it. I've got the Rocket single which is a two track that was never released in the US I believe. I think it was UK or Europe. I've got the the Siva single, which again was kind of an early one. I don't know if it was even released here. It might have just been a, a demo for a radio station. And then I've got a folder just called Songs from Soundtracks where I took all these songs because the Pumpkins were very active with soundtracks throughout the 90s. And then I have the Stand Inside Your Love, which was a two-track single that I found at Best Buy. And then my headphones just died, so I can't hear what my computer's saying. But uh, I know the next one up would be the Try, Try, Try single, which was another one that 
I found at a Best Buy. Once upon a time, at least our Best Buys had some uh, had some neat stuff, but that's long gone. Most all of your stores are uh, no longer carrying media, especially not weird, obscure singles and things. Next, I have the Tarantula single. And now I have a single called That's The Way, which I was not an American one. And then I have the End Is The Beginning singles, which came out of Australia. I think a friend brought it back for me from Australia. And then I have the Today single. I have a Tristessa single, which I don't believe was ever actually formally released. And then I have the Untitled single. Now, Untitled was the final song they published under the name before they broke up in 2000. They did actually release this as a single in the U.S. And it has, um, it has an alternate version of Try, Try, Try. And then it has a version of Age of Innocence. And it's kind of interesting. This is their, kind of their final single. Well, folks, that's kind of my first little talk about music. I figured I have to start with the pumpkins because it's me. So I hope you didn't find it too dull. And like I said, I might do individual reviews. Sorry, I couldn't really play music. I just don't know about YouTube and all that. And I'll get into other bands. So if this wasn't to your liking, maybe one of the others will be. Just a band that I've always enjoyed. And uh, you might give them a listen to... Uh, not everything they did is great. They they did so many songs, it's not really possible that all could be great. But they did have some songs that were surprisingly awesome. And also very emotional and raw, which was the right time in my life for them to come out. Well, this is Nisha, and I will catch you very soon next time. <laughs>